Welcome to Approach to ABGs Part 12, Albumin and the Anion Gap. We're going to quickly go through how to adjust the anion gap when there is a low albumin. And just a reminder, the anion gap is the difference between cations and anions, and we've simplified it so that we're really only looking at one cation and two anions, and the normal value is 12. Albumin is a contributor to the anion gap, and so we have to pay attention to it. The normal level is 40, and for every one gram per liter, albumin carries a one quarter negative charge, and this is fairly inconvenient for us because it just generates extra math. So when we do the anion gap equation with albumin, we see that it comes out to maybe two, which we've said that's acceptable. We'll accept that as pretty close to zero. But what do we do? How do we make an adjustment when albumin is really low? And the answer is when it's really low, we will underestimate the true anion gap. So if you don't make a correction for albumin, you will calculate the anion gap and it will come out lower than the true value. And so to correct for this, we add a quarter point to the anion gap for each drop of one in the albumin. So let's go through a really quick example to show you what this looks like. Let's say we have a normal anion gap with these numbers. The anion gap is 12, but then you notice, ah, the albumin is 12. Normal value is 40, so this represents a drop of 28. And dividing by four, because it's only a quarter charge per each drop of one, this means we have an additional seven and we're going to add that on to the anion gap and so now we have a corrected anion gap of 19 and you can see 12 would be normal if you didn't correct for the albumin you would assume the anion gap is normal and after correcting you see oh that is indeed elevated so that's as that's as much as you need to do. It's a little bit of extra math. It's inconvenient. It's a little bit time consuming, but you have to do it because you will underestimate the anion gap if you do not correct for albumin.